already having audio issues. <laughs> in the days when Babylon was the greatest city on earth, mankind lived in placid ignorance of the grandeur, vastness, and horror of the cosmos. Yet such tranquility is not meant to persist. Hello, and I see that the trip through the void has brought you safely to the steps of Lahine, which is the home of Vorpal Tales, where we present a plethora of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing pleasures. I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi, and I will be your arbiter for this evening. This is episode four after a long hiatus uh, of Black Void under Nebulous Skies. And if you Ooh. all at home so enjoy the wonderful things that Purple Tales has to offer, make sure that you seek us out on the internet. Don't forget to follow us here on Twitch. Please check out our archives on our YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. This is our webpage, VorpalTales.com, that has links to all of our social media, our Discord, and our Patreon. Make sure you check out our calendar to ensure that you don't miss any of your favorite shows, as I need to do that myself, because I forget what I'm doing after this long week. But while you guys are on our webpage, why don't you check out our uh, affiliate link and see all the cool things offered up by Hitpoint Press, QU Empire, and Gemhammer and Sons. Also, check out our merch. <gasps> Shout out tonight, go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that I play all of my games in, I think. Uh, kudos to Modifius and Black Void Games for bringing the wonders of the void to our table. And I have finally gotten the final version of the uh, Kickstarter, so we should be good to go for the rest of the campaign. Yay! Thank you goes to Love Your Rebellion. A nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Please be sure to check out their website, loveyrebellion.org. Special thanks goes to N8 Mid for the custom character sheets that you too can use if you use Astro Tabletop. As always, much love goes to the Patreons. From the Snicker Snacks to the Jabberwockies, you guys keep this project moving forward and we greatly appreciate it. And last but not least, thank you to all of our subscribers, our viewers, and fans. We love you all. But now let us meet the players who will be facing the horrors of the void. Void travelers, please introduce yourself. Tell everyone where you can be found and who you will be playing this evening. Yes, I am Kisama. You can try to find me on Twitter at True Kisama. And tonight I'll be playing Omesh, the mystic. Oh no, you're muted. Oh god. Oh, no. oh shit. Of course I am. Uh, hi, I'm Eric. Uh, you can find me online at Baron Recluse, and tonight I will be playing Ramiel, the Fallen Watcher. Hey there. I am at Space Lord PJs, and uh, tonight I will be playing Sniffs the Good Grass. <laughs> I'm Dave. You can find me on Twitter at Twin Dead Tweets. And tonight I am playing Rejden, the Jan Swordsman. All right. Uh, so, uh, it has been a while since we have played. So who would like to give us a short recap as to what has happened so far? I'll 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 fall on that sword. Here, let me help you out. Fall on that sword. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh the group heard the guards being summoned and after some exploring found one of the companions to Istil, but he was totally insane. With him was a rich frog like man and a djinn with twin blades, a strange woman with many eyes, and a salty demeanor. Omesh found his mother among the captives and abandoned the mission uh, to return to the safe house with her. After retrieving the captives, the group set off for the safe house as well, but were beset by rogues. Sniffs the fine grass attacked several of them with math, which caused them to lose their minds a little. Uh, Calliope pr proved to be good with a bow and Rejdan, had no trouble dispatching enemies as well with his twin blades. Bianca backstabbed and Ramiel split a man in twain. Returning to 
Chana and the others, they learned that a merchant prince of the frogman's species was interested in other in the other companions, but not the remaining one. Uh, that being the one named Zedel. Ramiel posited that he may be able to reach out to those who could mend his mind. Perhaps then they could present this captive before this merchant prince aboard his flying void vessel and gain access to the rest of the companions. As such, Ramiel and the others began putting out feelers and reached out to contacts for aid. Awesome. So you were able to indeed put out your feelers and uh, you do have some, those who, who do have contacts are able to utilize your contacts as needed. Uh, those who, who owe debts, uh, either by the backgrounds or by other means, you could ask for more help, uh, but that will come with a price. Question is how you want to approach it. So we need to, we're going to talk to the beggar king, right? No, that we're going to try to get an audience with an, with an enemy of the beggar king. Oh, uh, got it. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I think the guy's name is me. Prince me is spelled M I Y H. Correct me if I'm wrong. Dwayne. His name is. What is his name? Yes, M Y M I Y H. Me. Okay, cool. So yeah, I think we're supposed to be getting in contact with him somehow, and I was just proposing the positing the idea that we might be able to get a hold of somebody who can heal Zedel's mind and sort of insinuate ourselves in his presence. Uh, so Ramiel would just look for another watcher that he may know of, uh, that part of his. Uh, circle and uh, try to see if he can do a favor for a favor sounds good so it does take a good solid day for you to get a response uh as the the other angels <clears throat> tend to be fairly silent uh you know keep to themselves ever watchers but never dabbling in the affairs unless needed uh, but you are able to gain the uh, interest of one. What's and uh, that is a very good question. It was mentioned as somebody named Domina last time. Some golden skin, three-faced being that reads minds. But I'm not sure. I didn't have much more information beyond that. Yes, so Domina, uh, when you were in the, the jail, the dungeon of the, uh, you know, when you guys were underground, uh, they said that she had come in and was the reason that uh, that uh, Itzel's friend was pretty much insane that she had sucked all of the information out of his head and left him in a withered state. Uh, okay. So she works for the, uh, the people who were keeping him captive, or does she work for the uh, the prince? She works for no one. Hmm. She merely does jobs to either gain favor gain information for money. Money more or less as she is beyond such things. A mercenary. Oh, okay. A but like I said, you, you are able to reach out to one of your fellow watchers. Okay.
the price for an attempt to bring back the, the mind of Itzel's friend is not a steep one, but one that could put you in great peril. Naturally. At the mention of Domino, you are requested to gather information on her whereabouts. The angel is interested in Domino. Yes. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. Any information on her whereabouts and current dealings? This it information is required of you within the year. Uh, it's going to take a whole year to figure this out. <laughs> it may, it may not. Are you in a hurry? <laughs> no, I just got other things to do. <laughs> oh, yes, I forget about you mortals. Short lifespans, excuse <clears throat> me. <laughs> I mean... Uh, this one's going to live forever, but... <clears throat> uh, Ramel, you are enlightened, correct? Um, enlightened. I believe you have uh, I seem to level. recall that I have at least one. <laughs> I don't know if that qualifies as, total, as enlightened, but I have a point in it. Yes, so you are, you are an enlightened being. Uh, Omesh and Ramael, I would like you to roll four. Oh, gosh. Any specific kind of lore? Any that, if you are trained in any lore, you may roll that. But common lore is fine. If you're not trained, it's d12 minus three, right? Yes, D12 minus three plus your intellect. Oh, okay. That's not, that's not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I rolled a 12, so that's not ter totally terrible. I roll you again. Get, you get to roll again? Yeah. I got 19 total. Okay. I got a 10. <laughs> I rolled a 12 and then I rolled a 10. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I'll take it. <laughs> for a fleeting second, Omesh, you when you when you hear that he requires that the mission be completed within a year, your your mind sparks and then like the idea kind of just like flutters away like a sad butterfly. <laughs> but Ramael a year while, you know, mortals are, you know, they, they do have lifespans. The void, and if you are to follow her, traversing the void may, may have to be done. And you know that in the void, time does not progress the same as in the cosmos. Oh. So a few days in the void could very well be months mm. for everyone else. Makes or sense. the opposite. Okay. It shall be done in a timely manner, I assure you. Very well. Hmm. Bring forward the broken. Gestures for a Zedel to be brought brought forward. Stands before him, <clears throat> places his hands on his head. And almost immediately Zedel's eyes open up and white light shoots out. This goes on for a few seconds. And then Zedel merely screams, almost as if his mind has been spiked. 
The watcher releases him and Zedel falls to the ground. Watcher Please turns to Ramiel's like, oh, it must be working. Turns to Ramiel and says, it is done. Give him some time to recover. But he will remember who he once was. Hmm. Thank you for your graciousness. It was a pleasure. We shall see you before one year's time. A pleasure, yes. Grateful, perhaps. For something like this to be done is not without side effects. There is always a cost. You just see Zedel on the ground just kind of going, oh. <laughs> like Come someone, now, little human. Someone literally like juiced a lemon in his brain. <laughs> He helps him up, picks him just up like a like a doll, and just like come along, little human. Now, did you bring Ethel with you? Uh, only if she wanted to come. Otherwise, probably not. She probably would have come. Okay. Just for at the at the very least to make sure that he was all right. But he, uh, he starts to come to after a good 10 minutes of almost blank stares around the room. Uh, the Watcher and his cohorts have since dispersed. You are left standing you know, in a fairly empty room. As Zito begins to get his bearings, his eyes open a little bit. And then with great astonishment, they go bug wide as he sees uh, Itzel. He runs to her, hugs her, cries. Begins asking so many questions that she cannot keep up. Where he is, where she has been, where are the others? What are we doing here? She looks to you for aid, any of you. She's not sure how to answer the questions that are coming at her so rampantly. Ramiel yawns and just sort of fades into the background and does what he does best, which is watch humans. <laughs> she tries the best she can to answer his questions in turn, uh, recounting you know, all of the happenings that have that have gone on, the ambush, his imprisonment, uh, perhaps that they were interrogating him for uh, information on their home world, the escape, and then uh, she mentions the prince, Prince Me. And at that word, it's as if he stops. He stops shaking, stops asking questions, and all kind of goes silent. I have I have met him. I know what he wishes to do. Can't remember specifics. But he wants our home world. I do not know why. Like the whole thing, not just like a piece of it. I I, I believe that he, he wants it all. Whether it is to rule or just for financial gain, I, I, I do not know. Hmm. <clears throat> And like all of a sudden, he kind of spazzes out and he like starts waving at the air. So they're following us. We have to. We have to go. Must are we indoors?
They're always they're always watching. They'll find us. But but, but we must we must go. We must stop him. We, can you hear them? They're they're here. They're listening. I know they are. Who? His eyes, his flying eyes, they're all around. They're always they're always around watching us. They were watching us that day. He looks at Ethel like you know the day. <clears throat> the day you told me about. The day we were ambushed that day. He watched. He watched all. Omesh takes a long sip from a cup of tea. <laughs> Just okay. These eyes did they belong to anything in particular or were they just eyes? His his agents. His agents are him. They are a part of him. I I, I think he controls them. The beaks, the eyes, the wings, they fly. The birds. He has birds, birds. watching. Birds. Yes. Birds. Uh, you say that like it's a new concept. Falcons, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's a very specific bird. So, kill all the birds. Can you kill the birds? I just don't hey, spit against the wall here. Let me get this straight. The birds, they're spies. They're spies. <clears throat> they use their eyes and watch. They watch us all. They hear and they report. They are him. He is they. He sees how all of you are looking at him. It's like, I am not mad. Nobody, nobody's saying words here like that. You, no, no, it, not those words. I speak true. Makes, it makes you perfect sense to me. I'm not upset. I'm wary. You are out stiders to us. Oh. I do. I speak the true true. <laughs> Uh, true, true. Um, I, how about everybody give me uh, expression if you have it. If not, uh, oh shit, I have that. <laughs> the uh, presence plus expression. How about socialize? Socialize will work. Excellent. Then I don't take a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 11 total. All right. I got a seven total. I got a 10 total. That's an eight. All right. Bianca, what you got? I'm making a case for observation. <laughs> uh, no, this is not okay. observation. Okay. Then I get the penalty because like, my girl don't do people. Penalty minus three is a four. Okay, so everyone but Bianca, based on his words, the way that he's acting, 
you recall what Chana had spoke of earlier yesterday about the vultures that had been seen around the bigger king's court and that when they were first seen the bigger king's demeanor his actions took a rampant turn you remember him recalling how the bigger king was excited to meet Itzel and her entourage but then when the birds arrived he totally played them off and kicked them out of the palace hmm these may very well be the birds that he speaks of. Chana called them the wailing vultures. A common creature, not common in these parts, but a common creature. To the vultures. Yes, vultures. You have seen them. We. I don't believe we have. No, I don't remember vultures. I At believe least. they eat corpses, do they not? eaters of the dead I do not do I do not know they clean up a crime scene do not I do not fully understand this as we do not have these where I come from but I know it is a bird they're bald and they eat roadkill don't like I'm people I am unfamiliar with this term road. Uh, See, a road is a path that people and carts walk down. I'm unfamiliar with road kill. <laughs> is this when someone's killed on a road? No, it's when uh, the, the road attacks and kills someone. It's very deadly. Um, very strange concept. It's what I had for lunch time. like two days ago. So... You know, like you find a dead possum, you eat the dead possum. So, we, mm, what does this strange man want us to do? Back to the problem at hand. Do? There's only one thing to do. We must stop him. Stop the one trying to dig over your, your world. Yes, obviously. Sounds, mm, sounds simple to me. We... Leave out a rodent, a dead rodent, wait for a vulture to come, kidnap the, the vulture, interrogate it. And oh, perhaps figure out the birds. There. I mean, the birds can speak to people, it seems. Mm, you're can going they? To talk to this is a different kind of bird that I'm familiar with. Bird. Huh. Can we? Can we not just go to where he resides? Stop him? We must kill him. Kill him now. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. you, you don't feel like it's... I mean, if there's some sort of like impartial person that could judge him and send him to prison, maybe we do that instead of straight up murder. You must think of the lives of, of my people, of my home world. Right. What will happen if he succeeds? So, there's a guy here. Who talks to birds and he's going to take over your planet with what? I I don't know. We are people. but simple people. We do not have armies. Simple people, but useful nonetheless. So, if you follow our lead, we may be able to use your simpleness 
gain access to his highness's void ship. And from there, perhaps we could locate your other friends. They are alive? Indeed. I was sure that the shadowy ones had taken them, killed them. They left me. I was too weak. Oh, no, they had no use for you because you were mad. But I'm not mad. not so mad. Hmm. You are less mad now, I, I believe. See that Ethel is trying to calm him. <clears throat> but it's like the... Though he is not mad in his mind anymore, you can see the madness in his eyes. Almost a... Uh, like an intense paranoia. <laughs> but now that you are better, he will... Uh, he will find you more valuable in your current state. So I am to be bait. Yes. Uh, perhaps yeah. you're not so simple as I thought. Mm. And what makes you think that I would agree to these terms? Do you well, not want your friends back alive? I do not know even know if they are alive. Well, you well, won't know. Way to know. Well, I mean, we won't know unless we like put you on a plate. And then we can find out. But if they're if they're dead, and then you die, you won't know. So mm. he looks then, at you very confused. Can we all? You stop? need to be live bait as opposed to dead bait. Yes, if we could. Well, I'm just saying, if he happens mm. to die in the process, you won't know if they're dead. Yeah, they so probably should. Stop talking in metaphors. We've already got world eaters and vultures. If he didn't well, take me once, what makes you think that he would take me this time? Well, you're, uh, you've got all your ducks in a row now, so. You didn't then. He doesn't have to look for your ducks. You're useful now. Congratulations. What is a duck? That's not you speak in, speak in strange metaphors. Begging your pardons, I address the group. As being new here, and while I'm thankful for you rescuing me, and you know we fought together briefly, uh, what is it? What is it that we are doing here, or what is it that you're doing? seems what are you doing <laughs> at this rate it seems like we might be planning an assassination of a merchant prince <laughs> <laughs> at this rate no one's been up and said it yet well and our, I apologize but is there some sort of payment involved in this endeavor but I would like to know the same thing actually but simply, we will be repaid in jewelry. How much does the jewelry sell for? And Omesh takes out the bit of jewelry that he very, very cruelly took from the woman and just hangs it out. I'm not sure yet. But can I use nice. Can I use commerce to? Kind of gauge how much that's worth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I would like. I would like to use. Hold on. Uh. Is that an intellect? Uh, you can either use intellect or uh. Or perception, like just to eye it. Where is perception? I don't see perception. Awareness or not perception. Uh, yeah, just intellect will, will work. Okay. I don't, know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I have uh, an eleven. Was it, would that be inquiry? Anyway. Inquiry would be to ask. Oh. I thought I took an ability to know this kind of thing. Uh you could you have streetwise? I 
I have larceny, observation, acrobatics, stealth, and inquiry. <laughs> you could try the commerce. Uh, or you could try larceny. All right. It's going to be at a different difficulty. Uh, so that'd be my... That would be your intellect larceny. Oh, uh, uh, that is a 13. Okay, so Bianca, as far as you know, you've never seen this type of jewelry. Uh, it looks similar, similar to pieces, but the actual stones uh, are definitely not of this world. And because they are that rare, you imagine that they would sell for a pretty decent price, uh, especially on the black market. Rejden, you, with your, uh, your role, any person interested in jewelry would be very ecstatic to get their hands on this piece. Uh, an exact price, you are unsure However, you're guessing that it will sell for possibly maybe to a good buyer upwards of 1,000 copper. Hmm. And Omesh is just kind of flipping it around in his hands like it's uh, any other be, piece of jewelry he owns. I would be careful with that. It is quite valuable. So with something something like this, you could easily purchase your own void vessel and a palace. I will share that with Omesh. Omesh looks at it. And I do only share it with Omesh. Like, I will lean in. Rude. But yes, Itzel will uh, again tell the newcomer Rejden that she has promised you know, anything that she has on her person and that if you are to help her, her friends get home, uh, the, the original plan was just to get home. But now, uh, obviously, to stop a takeover, an invasion. She's not sure the word. But she promises that you know, the riches that they have on their planet will will be yours. An acceptable accord. And I extend my hand. She looks very confused at it, not knowing exactly what to do. She merely bows. I will bow. Bianca wonders why they're bowing. What was that? Bianca wonders why they're bowing. <laughs> well, again, she is not of this planet, not of this world. So her customs are a bit odd. But if you all recall, moving ahead, you all recall that uh, Chana stated that the prince was staying on the Herald of Dawn that was uh, currently in the port not far from Kima. Somewhere between Daresh and Kima. The size of the vessel should be easy, pretty easy to see, or pretty easy to distinguish if you ever see it.
if you were to go there now. Where's this place called again? The the vessel. The vessel and where it's located, presumably. The vessel is the Herald of Dawn. It is a void vessel. And it is currently docked on a wharf somewhere between Kima, which is where you are now, and Daharesh. Daharesh is spelled B-A-R-E-S-H? Oh, it's a Da, so D-H-A-A-R-E-S-E. Daharesh, all right. Thank you, thank you. Taking in all that's been said, giving you your, you know, giving her promise that you will be well rewarded. You see that uh, just by the glint in her eye, you can tell that Itzel, there's something kind of eating at her. All of you notice this. It's not. She is not one for uh, being sly. Do you have like an itch on your back? Like. She like, looks what, at what's you. His, uh, what's his face? My face? What do you mean? You're, you made a weird face. Like, he, like you got something to say. What is it? Oh. Well, just all of this talk, talk of the prince heading to my home world. I, I can't help but think is, as I can't remember how we got here totally, how will he get there? How does he know how to get there? That is more than likely why he requires your other compatriots, potentially. Maybe he knows. And he's why you're here. I don't know. Unless I've, unless I've robbed my room at the time. So is it the Prince that wants to take over the planet? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> huh. You're not quite sure why, though. I have not learned that. Is that a normal thing for void princes to do? Like cats destroying microphones? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had a battle of a 13 month old <laughs> before I got here. Did, did you win, though? <laughs> He's not in here, so yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was trying to pull like my phone, my the headphones, the computer monitor. <laughs> like, nah. Uh, excellent. <laughs> Ramya will uh, see that. It still is troubled and it's like, oh, you are concerned that your friends are already dead. I, hmm. It may be useful then to uh, aid us in this venture however you can so that we can provide proof of death or life. Please understand. I, I am concerned for their well-being. However, given the you know the terrible things that I've seen on this planet already, I have come to terms with their if if their demise has come. Good for you. You know, sometimes it takes people a lot longer than that. You know, you know? means you're tough. My people believe it is merely a 
a doorway to another life. Accurate. I mourn them, yes. But I know that I will see them again some. Hmm. Snips really wants to talk to this prince now and just be like, so how are you going to take the planet? What are you going to do with it? What are your plans? Like, do you, do you take it and put it in your pocket? Like, I'm not going to stop you. I just want to know. <laughs> I'm just curious. Get her. Day. Isn't there a rule of the internet if, if a cat pops up on Zoom, you have to drink? Maybe. Where did I make that up? I have no idea. There would be a lot of drunk people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I <was> say. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, whatever you have to drink, not necessarily alcohol. Oh. Well, it seems like we are at a dead end is, at this point. I think we should. Make a plan. I <sighs> does before we get started, does anyone here have experience stopping evil princesses from destroying and taking over planets? Oh, I once destroyed an entire city of people. Does that count? Oh, uh yeah, probably. Um interesting fact about yourself uh okay well then um more experienced than me and do we have anything to offer this prince and perhaps oh um so i uh am tied to a group uh, I owe them some, uh, I have some sway in this group. I can meet with them and uh, see if they are able to um, get us intel on the merchant prince, his likes his dislikes his movements his birds his birds uh it will uh cost me i'll probably have to do them a favor but all of them debt but uh What would you like to, uh, what kind of information are you looking for? Uh, well, first, uh, I'm talking out with them, but, uh, but I can find out, I can see, you know, I'm sure they could find out that kind of information for us and we can build a plan. What do you guys think? Oh, yes. This seems uh, suitable. These aren't nice people. Well, then neither are you, are you? We should blend right in. They didn't give me the opportunity to be nice. Uh, I am perhaps what I am. In, uh, perhaps we can engage in some time honored human bribery and obtain the information that we seek. I'm sure you can facilitate that. Yeah. We'll probably have to, I'll probably have to do a job for them. Ah. Theft or violence? My specialty is theft. And if I do my, 
and if I do my job very, very well, which I do, there is no violence because I'm out before they realize I've taken anything. Well, then this should be easy then. <sighs> All right. Um, uh, we can go to uh, the part of the city where they have an outpost. You guys uh, do some stakeouts around it and I will go in and I will find information from them. Is that your plan? Yeah, like, yeah, like I'm gonna actually go into the building where, like, mm -hmm. you know, and right. they're just gonna have, I'm gonna have the rest of them, like, outside, just kind of like scattered in the winds, like, being, uh, playing lookout. <laughs> okay. So you make your way, uh, to a portion of Kima just on the other side of Salvation Square. So you come to a place known as, I gotta look it up. Aya's Embrace. On the outside, it looks uh, very much like a, a regular den of vice. Uh, harlots of various species call out to anyone that passes. You know, the wonderful smell of sheesh wafting from behind curtains. It's a fairly nice so stone structure. But Bianca, you know that more darker dealings go on. Uh, in the bowels of the building. Uh, Bianca wanted everyone to take lookout points. Are you going to do as she says? Yeah, I mean, I will find a tall building just kind of like that I can navigate up to the roof and just kind of try to get a vantage point where I can see. Well, Mesh would probably follow maybe a couple fa a couple paces behind just to see if anyone's eyeing Bianca from like within the building. Oh, within the building. And like, I, I imagine like with this building, like when you enter, like, you know, depending on, like, what your name starts with, it's, like, once you get into, like, the building proper, like, you take that route to those bowels, like, you know, so, like, Bianca would head, like, west in the, like, you know, go, like, to the right and, like, uh, head down to where she would need to go. Romeo will just be the eyes in the sky uh, outside the building. So if he needs to, he can just swoop in and just pssst, cut people to ribbons or what have you. Or extraction if they need to get away. Okay. If so, <clears throat> I'm going to need... Are you going to try and be... Is Romeo going to be stealthy about it? Or are you just going to float on high as you normally do? Uh, we're going yeah. in at night? Sorry? We're going in at night? I don't know. Please, for the love of God, be as stealthy and as quiet as you can. <laughs> Romeo just smiles and puts his fingers to his lips, you know, like, sure. 
he's not the stealthiest person ever. <laughs> he's like, you know, as you can or whatever, <laughs> as you can. Gray skin. <laughs> He'll perch himself uh, on a building across the way and just sort of like, you know, pretend to be a gargoyle. Like a gargoyle. <laughs> pretend to be a gargoyle for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, Ramayo, roll me observation. Oh, no, here's something I am good at. All right. I have a dot in it, so I don't get a negative. Ha. Oh, wait. If you get a dot, you have a plus I one. Get, it's at plus one. Okay. That's right. So. That's you have be... you have a dot observation. Well, I have three. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Oh. Uh, eight total. <laughs> Roll the five, and I have so, awareness of plus one. All right. So, out of the corner of your eye, you see a couple of what seem to be other lookouts, and they kind of move into the shadow away from your your line of sight. Uh, they could be members of Bianca's guild. Uh, or they could be others. You're you're not sure. Did not get a good look. But as you look down from the uh, from the rooftop, you do see Bianca and Omesh enter Aya's embrace. So I see some people that belong to Bianca's guild, so to speak. You don't know, but you do see I others looking looking down from the roofs. Oh, so they have their own lookouts across the way. Probably. I keep my eye on them. So if they start moving in their direction or they start making a an action to, if they start looking like they're going to try to take a shot or something like that, he'll try to intercept. He's got eyes all, all around his head so he can just look forward and he, they don't realize like he's actually scoping them out or whatever. What will Sniffs and Rejden do? You're muted, Dave. Sorry. Do I see anything amiss at this point? Are you on the this? are you on the rooftops as Ramael is, or are you yes. on ground level? Then roll me observation. Uh a nine. So similar to Ramael's, you see a, a number of what seem to be lookouts, uh, but you can tell that they see you and they kind of slink back into the shadows. You know that they're still there. Mm -hmm. uh, every so often you'll get a, you know, a, a hint of movement. They don't seem to be hostile towards you, merely just on looking. Okay. Uh, I'll kind of do the same thing that they do. Though. I'll slink back into the shadows and try to hide myself. Roll still. Uh, it's stealth plus what? Uh, agility. Agility. Okay, so I have a total of a thirteen. All right. You find a nice shaded area. Hunker down. You still have a decent view of the street where Omesh and Bianca are walking towards the embrace. What about sniffs? Kind of just watching from afar, seeing what happens. All right. Roll observation as well. Twelve. Uh, similar to Rizden, you you see a couple, uh, some slight movements from the rooftops. Are you are you on the rooftops or are you on ground level? Uh, ground level for now. Yeah. So you see uh, <clears throat> you know, the the hint of a head that was poking over the side. Kind of duck away. So you know somebody's watching you. Okay. You're just not sure who. If no one calls out to you and no one 
stops, Bianca and Omesh move inside. And inside you see a, a number of customers all sitting on plush cushions encircled by, you know, the thick privacy curtains that are all around the, the inner inside. Any delectable foods, obviously company. And, uh, as you walk in, even if you are slightly apart, uh, women and oh. men both, uh, continually lull you like to come and play with them as beautiful rhythm muses music eases your mind are either of you enlightened mm -hmm. i am okay so i need both of you to roll uh what was that First thingy. <laughs> Give me stamina rolls. Just straight stamina? Straight stamina. Is a twelve. Eleven. Okay. You can sense that the the incense uh, that is burning and that combined with the the rhythmic music would entice anyone of a lesser fortitude. Uh, but you seem to push past all of the ridiculousness that seems to be going on in here. And push your way deeper in inside. Now, Bianca, you know that the this place is run by an individual by the name of Oyo. Oyo. Oyo is an imzu, a small imp-like mm -hmm. creature with uh, very sharp teeth. But do not let his size uh, confuse you, as he is always surrounded. With an entourage of three Talath. Talath are giant, uh, not giants, but very large. Think of them as large dragonborn type creatures. Yeah, you don't get to Oyo's position and not be dangerous. So. Uh, yeah, make my way. There. Yes, he, he sees you walk in. Yeah. And uh he, he comes almost overly friendly. He goes, Oh yes, come, 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 come. Come sit, sit. I know that you need something. Would not come here otherwise. You know me very well, Oyo. Oh yes, come, come, come. he kind of like pulls you you over to a, a a small private room a nice fine bed sitting cushions uh your own private entertainment uh is this a is this a social call is is this a is this a business call please please is, tell you oh your wishes to know it is a business call oh so what is it that you seek? I know that you have come to Oyo for information. Oyo knows all. Well, uh, <clears throat> we are looking for information on the Martian Prince. Uh, like Harbinger, what was his ship's name called? Harbinger of Dawn? Harbinger? Something like that. The Herald of Dawn. Herald. That's the H word. Um, he has a void ship called the Herald of Dawn. Uh, At the mention of the Herald of Dawn, you see his happy, like, 
go lucky face just go dead he's not Wonderful. he's not scared but he is not happy is this a he's a friend of yours unhappy or we don't like him unhappy neither all right what do you want to know uh we need to know so he has uh, sent you has he not he has not you have come to usurp oyo no then what need do you know of information on the herald of dawn uh the merchant prince uh we need to get on the herald of dawn and we not an easy need... task it is not that is why we are here with you to see you oh you uh we need information on how to get in talk figure out what he likes what he dislikes i'm on a job he has potentially has some people uh that can't uh that he's help, holding captive or they might be dead uh we don't know uh the Should job I is care? To, the job is to find out i don't really care either but then uh, why seek you this information it's the job is going to pay very well mm. now you are speaking my language uh he uh i have uh reason to believe that uh undermining the prince's uh rumored goals uh would bring a fortune of thousands of copper thousands if sold to the right buyer and so i need to know how to get in with the merchant prince he leans back into a big giant kitchen you see his little stubby fingers he thinks As I have said, getting onto the boat will be no easy task. As I am sure that a person of your magnitude is aware, there are several Jael females with filed down horns that have been seen on the Herald of Dawn. It is said that they possess many special skills, that they are master assassins. It is not going to be easy to get on. When you spoke earlier, <clears throat> you said the merchant prince. Now, I do not know him as the merchant prince, but I know that there is a prince on the Herald of Dawn that is said to be from another world and serves as a lieutenant for a very powerful warlord. This is probably the same one that you speak of. Uh, remind me, uh, what kind, what race was this so you were told that he was a uh on, i gotta get my my species here you were told that he was like a a frog one of the frog like uh species which is the 
Where are you at? Not that one. <clears throat> uh, the word. Word. Uh, o O R D. We uh we were told uh, that he's an ord. False. Hmm. These are lies. Interesting. I see that you have not done your homework. We just got. Th That's why I'm here. As I have said, he is a prince from another world. This is a species that I have only seen one other time. They are said to be very, very powerful. Masters of the mind. I believe they are known as the Ika. Ika? Yes, the Ika. And this warlord he works for. I do not know his name. Do not ask. But that, <clears throat> he takes a drink from a very strange looking goblet and then immediately gets back to his happy self. But that is all the information that I will give you without proper payment. And because you know all your love's payments. What kind of payment would you like? You're going to see that, like, big, toothy, like, sharp, needle-like teeth grin. Oh, you're asking. I came here knowing. Then I will tell. It is said that there is a great wealth on that ship, and I want it. Of course. I will provide you with as much information as I can. To get you safely, well... Mostly safe. Onto the ship. But anything you find on that ship will be mine, you understand? Mine. Of course. We know who you are. We can find you. I know. You will not betray Oyo. Of course not. I wouldn't. I haven't lived this long betray by going back on deals. In that case, and he, he offers you a drink and some food, and he will give you the following information. Right. So on top of what he said about the uh, the gel females mm -hmm. that are the master they're said to be master assassins. There are several of them. He does not know how many. Uh, he usually he says that they are usually seen at night. There has been several wailing vultures seen spotted on the masts of the Herald Dawn, and they act as lookouts. They have also been seen flying into Kima and around the Flea Palace where the Beggar King lives. Based on Oyo's calculations, it's evident that the Herald of Dawn anchored shortly after Itzel and some unknown delegate company arrived in Lahim. He doesn't name Itzel by name, but you're pretty sure that's who he's talking about. He also tells you that a number of guards in spiked bronze armor continually patrol the vessel. Hmm. Uh, he's not sure on their species, but they do look very formidable. A side note that he kind of gives you is he's pretty sure, and he cannot confirm it, that the vessel will be leaving in a matter of days. 
and it's supposedly on its way to Kaalum, a Federation. But he cannot confirm that. All right. Uh, thank you, Oyo. Uh, if you manage to find out any other information, you do know where to find me. Oh, Oyo will call on you. And if you manage to make it back alive, I will be happy. Like I said, I haven't lived this long by being dumb. We shall see. Have a nice day. Have a wonderful day, Oyo. Looking forward to doing business with you again. He calls over random uh, random entertainers. They dance for him as he gets giddy and drinks the rest of his unknown drink. Uh, Bianca oh. will uh, get up. Uh, uh, find Omesh. Omesh would currently be trying to speak with a handful of people, just saying that, like, hey, the Ome uh, Omesh, the son of Sanath, is looking to speak with the person on the boat. I cannot remember the name. <laughs> Prince Me. Prince Me. Just adds, like, a bit of intrigue, sort of laying down seeds, starting rumors. Come on, dude. Let's go. Um, for Omish, give me either. How how are you going to be sowing these seeds of of information? Uh, are you just going to be asking asking away, or are you going to try and uh, bribe people? Or are you just saying, um, I am looking to talk with him. I am an important person as well. Strike up a conversation here. Maybe bribe an entertainer here to like gossip a bit. Combination of the three, if you will. While Bianca is having that whole conversation. All right. Then I want you to give me two roles. I want you to give me socialize. That is either going to be, that'll be presence. Socialize persuasion. This will be, persuasion. yeah, you can do persuasion. That would be a 12. Okay. And then I also want you to give me, um, Oh, let's do, uh, we'll do end query. I have no inquiry. Yay. What would be the trait for that? That will be oh. presence. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That would be a one. <laughs> oh no! Like a like a, a you roll a one or just a one after modifiers? I have uh, that's after modifiers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is so, that you, Omesh? Pretty Omesh much all you're able to get out. Him. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much all you're able to get out of anyone uh, yeah. is mainly out of the. Uh, the entertainers and you learn that there is one on the ship called the consort and the consort is deeply enamored with the prince 
and wishes only to save him from the clutches of the Salkus or the the Halkusarum. She will do anything. Anything for him. Anything. Anything. And then you end up saying something really dumb. And uh, you get a couple of drinks thrown in your face. Tell you to get out. And that's when Bianca pops up and says, hey, we're leaving. Very well, then. Uh, we leave and, uh, like, look up at where, uh, where my L is and just kind of go, like, let's go. But with Uh, the little bit of time or a little bit of information that you have gathered should be able to at least find the Herald of Dawn and go and scope it out and then decide on your next move. However, I feel that this is a good point to take our half point break before we actually head to the wharf. Mm -hmm. So we will take a quick 10 minute break. I have 937 Eastern time, but then again, my clock on my computer is slow. That's what I have. Okay. Yay. So it's not broken. So 10 minute break. We will all return to you at 947 Eastern standard time. Don't go away.
And we have returned from our small break away from the void. But now we find our party seeking answers aboard the Herald of Dawn. As Omesh and Bianca make their way out of the, we will call it a pleasure house, for lack of a better term. Those who are up on the roofs overlooking the streets, no roll needed, but you hear the flapping of wings. And just as you hear it and you go to turn your heads in the direction that it is coming from, uh, you do see two giant vulture like creatures flying away towards the river. Hmm. All right, I will head down to join up with Omesh and Bianca. Roughly, how far away are these bird-like creatures in meters? In meters? Mm -hmm. About 50. Cool. Okay. Wait, they're 50 meters Excuse me long? while I proceed to do nothing with that knowledge. No, they're 50 meters away. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, uh, that's, that's a big buzzard. They are larger than, <clears throat> than what we think of vultures, but they are not they're not giants. Yeah. 50 meters, so I'm get saddling it and riding it. <laughs> As they uh, proceed up, Romeo will just kind of like hop and drift over some of the other uh, rooftops and just kind of follow them back to where they're going. I'll keep a lookout. I assume that Bianca will share all of the information that she acquired <coughs> from Oyo. Or perhaps she won't. Hmm. Perhaps Omesh plucks a couple of birds out of the sky using mysticism. Perhaps. That would be cool. Okay. But you can do that from like 50 meters away? You oh yeah, can. 50 meters. It's difficult. <laughs> I got it. 15. Difficulty 15 to do this. Hmm. Strength 7 pull towards no the ground. No pressure. No pressure at all. You can do it. <laughs> and I got a 15. Exactly. Hey. Nailed it. Is, was that enough to get both or just one? Uh, that's enough to target both. Yeah. Zam! Both. Strength seven pull. As the, as gravity begins to pull them down, Omesh just looks up, aggravated and annoyed. <laughs> so aggravated and annoyed, Omesh says some words, waves his fingers, and uh, almost immediately, the birds kind of stop mid-flight. You can see that they're flapping. It's more erratic and faster as they try to stay aloft. They are pushed down into the ground. You said force seven? Uh, strength seven would be a potency four. Push. Where are my birds at? <laughs> Where are my whaling vultures? Rats. Ah, oh, there they are. Strength seven, you say. <clears throat> I believe for the mechanics of Black Void, I'm really attempting a knockdown combat maneuver on each of them with yes. strength seven. Flip furiously towards the combat section of this book. Uh, 
Either Both way, they not would not knockdown. have been able to resist that. <laughs> yeah, knockdown's no damage, but it's an opposed roll to knock them down, essentially. Yeah. They, they, they try to flap, push against the gravity that's pushing them down to the ground, but are unable to. As they continue to flap, you know, ferociously, one of their wings snaps and it plummets to the ground. You hear a large thud in the distance. Uh, the other one's wings do not break, but it merely soars down. Not taking much damage, but less than the other one. Hmm. You do not know if they are alive or dead. We should go find out. Yes. All right. So you guys make your way through the streets as best you can, guessing where uh, where they may have landed. <clears throat> Roll survival. Oh, it's an interesting one. I think you're asking for a skill I don't have, sir. Uh, no. Is it awareness? <laughs> Ooh. It is awareness. All right, then I got you a three. Or, or intellect, based yeah. on trajectory. I got a total of a three. Got a nine. In place of attempting to wander the streets to find that specific spot, could I fling myself at a speed of 60 meters per second into the air? <laughs> With a difficulty 12 uh, phenomenon so that I will land gently upon arrival. So that you will land gently on arrival? It's both a levitate at potency 2 and an a mm -hmm. acceleration at potency 6. Okay. Was so much going to splat himself into a building? Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, unless, unless they catch him somehow. That <laughs> is exactly a 12 for that Ooh. potency 12 phenomenon. Ooh. Okay. So while you all so start as making everyone your way else through the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Omash is just like, well, screw this. <laughs> and Superman's flings himself into the air. You see this small body start to descend in the distance. <laughs> Omash, when you land gingerly on the random alleyway in Kima, you see that both birds are indeed dead. Um, one of them body is totally broken. It was probably the one whose wing had snapped. Uh, you know, shattered beak, blood all over on the street, feathers everywhere. Uh, the other one looks like someone had gotten to it right as it landed. You can see little tiny feet prints in blood moving away from the body. You can see a large chunk taken out of the side of it. Yeah. I guess that answers the question of whether it's edible or not. Mesh begins following the trail of blood to see where it goes. At a whopping four walking speed. Right. What is everybody else's walking. speed? Uh, I didn't know how to figure that out, so I haven't filled that out yet. Uh, you are a medium creature, correct? Yes. Should be... Five six. plus your strength, strength modifier. I have 6, 12, and 24 for walk, run, and sprint. I have 10, 20, 40. All right, let me look this up here. Strength modifier to species factor. 
And unless you took anything that made you large, you're, you're automatically medium. Yep, so medium. So five plus strength. <clears throat> uh, what is that? Strength modifier, so plus two. A seven. So I have a seven? Seven meters. Or round. All right, so seven, 14, 28. That's walking speed or just my combat speed? That's both. Walking and combat is the same. Okay. So, yes, if you guys are walking after Omesh, uh, you all basically get there at the same time. Omesh is much slower. Uh, So, I would imagine that Omesh has left the scene of the crash by the time you guys get there. That's fine. I'm used to waiting, so I'm very patient. But all of you do see the uh, the broken body of one bird and the uh, eviscerated body of another. Hmm. Huh. You you also do see the small footprints uh, heading off down in a, in a, a dark alley. Could one of us speak with the dead or something along those lines? I might not remember remembering <laughs> that incorrectly. I don't believe so. Okay. Omesh, where are you going? One of these vultures seems to have been murdered. <laughs> I'm just going to cock me. my eyebrow at you. <laughs> <laughs> and is that a bad thing or a good thing? They were silenced. It is a very bad thing. Why don't we want these birds silenced? <clears throat> yes, but after we spoke to them. Wow. Now they won't speak to anyone. Us included. Did it have something to do with them falling from the sky? Or should I say being pushed, pushed into the, out of into the, the ground? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, Bianca would have, once we got together in a quiet location, would have told the group what Oyo had uh, told her. All right. So she did indeed tell you guys. Uh, Omesh, as you move further and further down the alleyway where these bloody uh bloody prince are leading you about halfway down this alley and you see four very red eyes in the darkness at the end of the alley it's kind of looking at you and it's like a dead end alley it's like a dead end alley all right would it be possible for omesh to just pretend like he took a wrong turn and continue walking <laughs> Like into the dead end, or just turn Not even into the dead end, just like kind of go like, oh, seems to have taken a wrong turn. Just turn around, walk away. Nothing to see here. No, I know what has four eyes. I know what I know that. Yes, you could easily turn around and start walking the other way. Not, not even gonna. No, no. What? What? Sniffs the good grass. You uh, you sniff something that's not good grass. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's sort of left and broken. Gonna wrap that up in a russet sack or something and take it with us. Okay. <laughs> Guys do have bags. You could stuff the bloody body into a bag. <laughs> Morhamel makes a note of that and it's like, oh, is that for destruction leader? All of you see Omesh coming back the, the way that he had gone. And he's about, f- you know, three quarters of the way back to the group. 
when you hear the pitter patter of small feet. By small, I mean the size of a dog. As uh, those four red eyes become two entities, mm. you see giant nasty rats Ooh. come tumbling down the the alleyway. One with half of a vulture in its mouth. Ah, uh, the carrion eater becomes carrion. Huh. Irony. Like I said, these these rats are not not your <clears throat> not your earth rats. These rodents are about the size of a dog. They have flattened, scaly tails, They're covered in knobs and warts all along their bodies. Jersey rats, got it. It's like they have some type of mange. They have tiny little front limbs and large back limbs. If you get a good look, you can see that their front limbs actually have two paws on each front limb. Anyone who has lore, any type of lore, uh, knows that these guys are all over Laheen. Uh, they're mainly scavengers. And they can practically digest anything. They're hmm. mainly known to uh, attack you know, sleeping beggars, small children, or anything that's dead. And the vulture is dead, right? Yeah, both of them are dead, yes. <coughs> okay. Let's just make sure. We just, I just watched to make sure none of them attack uh, Elmish, and as soon as he comes to rejoin us, I'm like, okay, well, that was interesting. They catch up to Omish uh, and just kind of paddle right past him, running to towards the body of the second vulture that they had already taken a chunk out of. Hmm. And in a frenzy, like land piranhas, you know, fluffs of feathers go into the air. Wait, isn't the other vulture in like sniffs the good grass uh, bag or whatever? Yes, but the one that you had left is still there. Oh. Oh, sorry. I thought he picked up the initial one. No, I picked up the one that's less broken than wasn't. Oh. Eaten. Okay, got it. It's less bloody. I was, the, I was thinking he was gonna yeah. keep it like a like a play thing for later. Okay. They say that we have our work done. They see as you all watch, you know, watch their frenzy. They let off a screech, dip back down the alleyway. Seems nothing sinister here. Pretty sure the rats also work for him. That's levels of paranoia I don't want to get into right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Omesh just looks relieved that it was a couple of rats and not some sort of assassin lurking in the darkness and just kind of strolls back up to the rest of the group. Alright, so you are all back together again. What did you discover, Bianca? Oh, um, yeah, uh, Bianca tells the group uh, what she learned while they were uh, in the, uh, what was that place called? The <clears throat> Maya. Where? The Amaya oh, yeah. The place that you were at? Yeah. Aya's Embrace. Aya. Uh, tells them everything she learned at the Aya's Embrace. Um, so, it, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, our merchant prince is actually an an Iki, an Iki, an Ikai. Ika. Ika. It's actually an Ika. Hmm. And uh, Oyo had only seen one of these at one point, only once in his life. They're very powerful. Uh, can do mind shed. 
Uh, None of you have heard of an Ica. And he's a lieutenant to some kind of warlord, so. But I need to stress this very carefully. Very, very carefully. The deal I made with Oyo in exchange for this information was everything we find on that ship is his. Mm. Your mouth is making checks it cannot cash. The deal you made. So Not me. As far as this one's concerned, everything you find is his. You do not want to be on the wrong side. No, I'm not going to be. You are. Have a nice day. <laughs> I concur with Sniffs the Good Grass. Seems very easy to work around. If we don't find anything, then we don't owe anything. No, we discovered it. <clears throat> No, not <clears throat> quite frankly. It was a deal that I did not make, therefore, I don't see why I should be held accountable to it. That will not mean anything. It's oil. No, then we are on the same page because this agreement is between yourself and this Oyo person. Exactly. <clears throat> well, shall we? We shall. <laughs> it's the dead vulture over his, his arm. Uh, by the way, um, are you eating that? No, can anyone <laughs> talk with the dead? No. Mm. I'm afraid not. Shit. Tosses it aside. <laughs> uh, Bianca will pick it up. <laughs> hey, Bianca now has a bag with a dead bird in it. Are you going to eat it? Yeah. Okay. Huh. In no, some cultures, no, I believe you... Consuming the dead is a way of communi communing with them, is it not? Um, I think it's just know. for sustenance. Don't know about uh, any religion shit, um, but when you grow up not knowing when you're going to eat, you just eat what you get. So... The Herald of Dawn. When will you go there? Now, just showing up to this thing is weird, I would imagine, uninvited. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean... <laughs> is it not known that the prince partakes in slaves? It is known. It is well known. I relay that to the, the group and I'm like, um, how do you think Zetel would look in chains? Mm. Omesh glares at you like, no, we are not putting any chains on anyone. Oh, this is um, a deception. Seems a feasible one to me. I think this one gets what he's trying to do. <clears throat> Humans are so surprising. I thought slavery was something that you were very accustomed to. Not now. a human. Oh, of course. I mean, present company accepted. What is slavery, honestly? 
No, not doing that debate here. All right. So when this will you go? <clears throat> Uh, such. Now, this dude just hanging out on a boat, not really accepting any visitors, not throwing any parties, just dude on a boat, wants to eat a world. Is that a good <laughs> summation of it? I mean, you haven't seen the boat yet, so you don't really know. Oh, okay. Maybe we should scope out the boat during the day, maybe ask around the docks, like, hey, what's going on? They throw in any fancy parties. <laughs> a good plan. Like, does he indulge in? By, by crazy chance, shit? is there a sexy party going on? Yeah, looking for sexy parties. Chance. That's a uh, that's the other boat. This is the the chill. We don't do fun <laughs> stuff. Boat. Sorry. Is it we a... only trade slaves here. We don't do any of that fun stuff. No, no butt stuff. Boat. All right, fine. <laughs> So you guys make your way to the wharf. Yes. Uh, during the day. You can fly day. over. Yes, you can fly you over and try to scope it out. So does, uh, does Ramael kind of separate himself from the group and do like a, like buzz the tower? Yeah. I'll just do a flyover, you know, make note of how many guards they have on the wharf and that sort of thing. He'll circle around a couple times and then take off back. He'll send him a. He'll set up a signal with them in case he's being followed by more vultures or what have you. Hey, give me two separate <laughs> observation checks. All right, first one is a two, which is terrible, and with the I get one for press one for uh, awareness and. One for observation. Yes, so that would be a total of four. Not great. Yeah. The other one is a little better at five plus two, so seven. So you see a lot of people. Hmm. There's crew members uh, moving up and down uh, the gangplank. You know, picking up uh, whether it be food or some type of supplies. A lot of them are picking it up. There's some dock workers that are also loading stuff onto the boat. On the ship proper, you can see that this is a, a massive ship. It is a uh, almost like a four-tiered vessel. Hmm. A, a main deck and then three smaller decks that stack on the end. Uh, all along the deck, you see more and more crew just running about and tending to sails. Uh, some are swabbing the deck. Uh, you do see a number. You can't get an exact amount just because there's so much movement going on. A number of armed individuals that kind of fill about the place. Probably guards. They don't seem to be picking up anything like some of the other crew do. I'm I'm sitting there with uh you know I'm doing the the rounds and I'm if I can I'll I'll use the um uh the the clay tablets and my read to just kind of like make a count I'm like oh there, there are dozens or there are hundreds of them <laughs> how many are we talking exactly uh give me give me one more observation eight total so on your flybys you can guess your your numbers may be a little bit off but there's about 25 quote unquote crew members and oh. 20 armed 
individuals. I mean, okay, wow. All right, so I'll make a note of that on the tablet when I get back. I just count them off to him. Like, there are this many ship hands that I was able to observe, and there are about 20 armed uh, people on the boat. There's several, it's a four tiered vessel with what, what is it, like three of the uh, the decks being on the lower hand? Like, there's a top deck. And yeah, there's so like think of it as like the, you have the main deck, and then on the back of the ship, it's, uh, you know, one tier, two tier, three tier. Got it. Okay, yeah. I'll relay that information to them. That's what we're going up against. Like, so... In Discord, you have a picture of the vessel. Ooh, fancy. Fancy. Look at that. <laughs> that does fancy. not look like a party boat, unfortunately. Oops. I think it could. I mean, yeah. it's got the big wide deck in the front. Yeah, maybe. Party in the front. It's party in the front. Business. It's. I thought it was party in the back, business in the front. Well, it's bus- it's party <laughs> it's in like the front, a, business in the uh, back. So wait, it's like a mullet ship. Yeah, it's just got, like, hair down in it. It's got, like, really nappy bangs in front. Like, just, you know, very luscious. And then a a real short cut in the back. Ramael, as you finish your your circle and you start to head back, you hear hear a, a number of squawks. And you turn back just in time to see on the main mast... Seven uh, separate whaling vultures. He kind of grins to himself and uh, makes whatever gesture he uh, agreed to with the rest of the crew, letting them know that he's being followed. So he'll sort of lead astray on purpose, like not going directly towards them, but he'll stay within view of them and just kind of like flare his his wings in such a way to sort of indicate like, hey, I'm being followed. <laughs> and then just head into a uh, a more secluded area of the wharf side. See if he can lower them into uh, into an open area to fight them or whatever. If, he, if they're going to try to chase him down. All right. As the rest of you come up on the wharf proper, you can get <clears throat> a good view of the ship as it sits in dock. Uh, all around you, dock workers, uh, crew of different vessels that the the Herald of Dawn is not the only ship in dock. There are uh, two other large vessels. You do not know the names or why they are here, uh, but they are they are major vessels. There are some other smaller uh, vessels dabbled about, but those are the the larger of the <clears throat> of the ships in port. Is there a um, sort of like a dock foreman or like a quartermaster or somebody who's monitoring what's going on uh, on and off the boat at the uh, at the Jeff Winger hair boat? <laughs> yes, there is. Okay, I want to walk up to that dude and do some subterfuge. Okay, and act like. Um, uh, so this one's got, uh, you know, 40 crates of tarragon honey glazed Cornish hens for the party tonight. You know, where do where you want them? So I go, I, and he, like, starts looking around at, like, some of the crates that are scattered about. And he's, uh, uh, he's just pointing to random crates like he's... <laughs> <clears throat> I don't I don't have that on my on my list. What are you talking? Uh, about? What is this one talking about? This one's got the uh, like a, a a shitload of stuff like, you know, got got some lettuce, tomatoes, you know. Which what stuff for the party? What what party are you I I What, you know? He's he's obviously confused. Is there not a party going on? I don't I don't know of a party. What what ship are you going to? What is the ship's name I keep forgetting? <laughs> Hell of of dawn, Herald of dawn, Herald of uh, Herald of dawn. You know the 
Herald of Dawn. Ah, the princess ship. Yeah, Herald of Dawn, you know. <clears throat> uh, I will need to see your papers, please. Uh, I don't got papers right now. Just got to get this stuff loaded. Is this, this, they having a party? Are they doing parties? What kind of parties are they doing? They got a lot of stuff to move. I, I am, I'm sorry. I'm not privy to that information. Why are you not privy? You, you, you run the stuff. You run, you figure, you know what goes on and off that boat, right? I have been paid handsomely to turn another eye. Well, look, I've been paid handsomely as well with a box of, with 40 crates of tarragon honey glazed Cornish game ends. So, you know, that's got to go somewhere for this party that's going to happen on there. That uh, I was told there was a party, deliver the stuff, you know, it goes up there, comes down here, wherever, I don't know. So uh, you tell me if it's supposed to go there. Is there a party going on there? Roll your subterfuge. Eighteen. My God. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are talking circles around this man. He's like, uh, 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 uh um. He's, he's like, just looking for him to slip up and say what's actually going like something that might be going on there or like what he knows is goes on there. Just pieces of information that's always looking to pick up on. He doesn't even need a straight answer. Yeah, so he, like you said, he he doesn't really know much. He's he just kind of like, um, well, you know, all, all of these these crates they they were hand picked by the prince, and uh, I mean, I mean, if these if these game hens do do serve at his pleasure, then then I I, I guess uh, what's his uh, pleasure? Parties? What's he what, what's he need up on there? When you know, he obviously I mean, needs a lot of a lot of game hens. He's got something going on, right? I, I, I yes, I mean, he must he must need them for his <clears throat> his great journey. Great journey. Uh, when when's he leave? He's going somewhere. Going to a, yeah. going to a party. Yeah, he he said he's leaving within two days. Oh, leaving in two days. Interesting. All right. Yeah, all the provisions have to be stowed. So, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. All right. Why don't so, you get yes hens? Yeah. Go. This one's gonna go get go get his boys to do the hens, and you he'll, he'll be ready. But yeah, you know, have a nice day. Yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah. And he hands a a little, kind of like coin. To you, he said, "You're you're gonna need this." Oh, thanks. And he just shouts at several dogs. Yeah, get them crates on board right now. Got to get it up there. Got to get it going. Big, big, big great old party. Comes How are you? Are you telling your party to do no, this, or are you just yelling at yelling at random on the, on crew? The dock, yes. Uh, give me. Uh, Keep working. <laughs> <laughs> you see a lot of them, like like look up. Uh, they all kind of look at the foreman and uh, roll performance. Oh, don't have that. But I did roll it. No. Um, what's performance uh, adds presence? Presence, yes. Uh, okay, that is um, <clears throat> that is a six. <laughs> So not as many as you had hoped start picking up crates. And they do pick up crates. Uh, oh, he didn't even care if they even did anything with it. Just the fact that... <laughs> yeah, a couple of them pick up random crates and they start moving you know, up the gangplank towards the main deck. But they're all like talking where they're like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> what just happened? Uh, do I know what this coin means? No. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is a coin not native to the realm, so it's not it's not like a like a copper din. It's not a. It doesn't look monetary. <clears throat> yeah, more like a, a like a like a challenge coin type thing, or like yeah. marker. Okay. Yeah. He'll <laughs> sniffs will return to his group. And just kind of flip the coin to Omesh and be like, this one got that for you from idiot over there on the dock. Has something to do with getting on board or being on board. Also, they don't throw parties, which is disappointing. Omesh takes a nice close look at the coin. 
see if there's any symbols or anything. There are many symbols. Mm. I Roll able. cryptography. <laughs> <laughs> Almost has it in the bag. Alrighty. Yep. That's a minus one if it's an intellect roll. It is an intellect roll. <laughs> Everybody's got that some apple. cryptography. That's a 14 total. Hey, what? all right. Wait, how? I know how exactly that? how this coin is. I got a 12 on the die. Reroll. Oh, reroll. Okay. Oh, got look you. At you. <laughs> I'm like, wait a yeah. second. I, was just, I got a crit. I have a minus one and you have 14. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the symbols are definitely not of Lahim. Um, you don't recognize any type of <clears throat> language. It looks more like, like, uh, like an expression of stature. And it is definitely something that would be given, like, shown as, "I am, I am one with this group," or. Like a like a token of permission. Excellent. Yeah, apparently they don't throw parties, but they're leaving in two days because I guess he thinks he's gonna be able to take over the planet in two days or something. I don't know. That wasn't very specific. Excellent. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, Bianca, roll larceny. All right. I uh, just, uh, that's, uh, uh, agility plus larceny. This is going to be awareness and larceny. <coughs> <clears throat> okay. Twelve. All right, so you've been scoping this boat out, you know, ever since you got into a, a good distance of it. And as any good thief, you try to follow the the ways that the the quote unquote guards are moving. You look for openings. You look for ways that you can get in there, and you're able to make out a a, a number of approaches that that you would be able to use. Some would be better at night. Some would be okay right now. Uh, but it seems that the the wharf porters seem to be coming and going without anyone asking them anything. So there's just people picking up crates and walking on. So it seems that if you were to disguise yourself as a porter, no one would even think twice however all of these porters are human all right so we've got some options uh there are certain routes we could take that'd be better at night and there are some that we could do now, one of which is disguising ourselves as porters, but the porter, only the porters are human. Porters are only human. So that knocks out two of our group, which is highly inefficient. I was going to say, I do not look human. Oh, I forgot about you. Yeah. Uh, 
Three. And three of each. Oh, Mesh blatantly looks like a, an Efreet. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, so. So that leaves. What does that make the rest of us then? Yeah, I didn't realize Omesh probably looks very similar to Rejdan then. Are you a Jen? Yeah. Jen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're we're the same. Yeah, we are the Would same. Been... You. <laughs> You're just now Boy. realizing this. <laughs> <clears throat> Beautiful moment. <laughs> so that leaves Bianca <laughs> to pass for that, you. That's, and that's highly inefficient. So, as the bodies move all over the deck, you know, <clears throat> continually moving crates on, some crates coming off. Uh, you hear like a, a clang, like a, a very loud door opening that kind of silences everything that's going on in the the wharf area, in the immediate area. And. Uh, I need everyone to roll. Willpower. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. up. A nine. Yeah, I got a straight nine. That's a four. I got a 10. Nice. <clears throat> Remind me, is willpower a thing on our sheet? Yes. A trait. Is a trait. Yeah, check the modifier roll on the, it. Roll, big, roll the D10. Yep. Add the modifier. D12. Traits, where are you? In the middle of the page. Bunch of circles. Low powers in the lower left. Those Thank circles. You. Thank you. I saw everything on there but that one. Uh, that is a 10. Wow. Okay. So. As this door slam, oh my God. As this door slams open. Your, uh, eyes are immediately drawn to the sound. And you see what could only be described as a praying mantis type being on the very top deck of this ship. And he is surrounded by uh, two other individuals, <clears throat> one in a uh, very large, like uh, almost like prayer robes. And the other is, uh, is the other? a, uh, a female, uh, a female gel, uh, covered in knives, nice <clears throat> leather armor. She stands very, very, very close to him. Female what? I'm sorry. Jael. Could yeah. you uh, put the spelling of that in the Discord? I can. Thank you, thank you. Now you all know Jael to be normally horned, but she is not. 
He, uh, he did say they filed their horns down. Now, anyone who rolled less than 12 on their willpower roll, I need you now to make... A sanity roll. Sanity roll? Sanity roll. Sanity. Uh, what is a sanity roll? Sanity roll is going to be a d12 plus... Uh, I do believe your willpower again. Oh. Uh, so for me, that's just a straight 11. Got a 10. Uh, 10. Sorry, you roll a d12 and you add your total sanity? No, you'll add your willpower. Ah. Your willpower modifier. I got a 10 total. Okay. You all did not do well. <laughs> Jesus. So as this insectoid stands up, he places his hands on the, the railing. It's almost like everyone in a a huge radius just stops. Completely stops what they're doing. They all turn and they stare at him. And you can't find like yourself. You find yourself like almost in a distort disoriented like state of mind. Uh, almost like you're you're dropping in and out of lucidity, and while you're able to stop any type of like strange urge, because you almost want to like get down on your knees and just praise this man, sing, being, God. Kind of a cool guy, just doesn't throw parties. But uh, anything you guys do for the next uh, 15 minutes is going to be at a minus three, in addition to any other negatives you have. Sir, and Oof. does this thing do anything then other than just kind of be like, oh, I have a boat? Nope. He, yeah, he has a boat, and he has a special ability just called awe. So this guy comes out and literally <laughs> does, I'm on a boat, motherfucker? Like, yes. Fucking Don't this you guy. Ever Holy shit. No way. Machismo. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, wow. That is... I hate him. <laughs> uh, you see the, the robed individual lean in. Uh, you can't hear what he's saying. But you can definitely hear that there. You can see that he is saying something to this insectoid. The prince... Uh, the prince merely nods. He turns to the, the female assassin. The uh, prince has no mouth. So you do not see him say anything. Uh, but she nods. And all three of them turn around and walk back into the top deck of the ship. And almost like a stop motion movie, as soon as the doors shut behind them, everybody starts moving again. Hmm. As as it almost as if time itself had stopped momentarily. Hmm. Wow. Okay. We just got I'm on a boat. We got boated. We got boated. The uh, as this one was seen. What was this one saying? Other than that, Insectoid is very handsome. And has a boat. I have not felt a presence like that in quite some time. Don't think this one cares about that. What is going on? <clears throat> uh. 
So we have to beat that thing. Uh, or convince it to not take over another planet. Um, good, good fucking luck. Agreed. <laughs> Seems his plan might be to just walk out and say hello. I own your planet now. This is my planet. Flag. <laughs> okay. Um, this is my world now. <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. At least we know what the plan is now, so there's that. And, and none of us have heard of this thing? None of us have heard of this type of creature? No. Really? Okay. I mean... Very, very little is known about their species. Hell, if we couldn't just go ask it a question? You could try. You do have a permission coin. We do. You're not quite sure what the permission is, but it is it does give you some standing. At the very least, you might be able to get on the deck. Are we to bribe our way in with such coin? In theory. The, uh... Dock workers seem to imply that we we would need that in order to get on board. Ah, uh, yes, I'm familiar with this <clears throat> human bribery. Yes, not the human. No, no, no. This is a token of a gift. Yes. No, Omesh's mouth is still require deep reciprocation. Seeing the man. How generous. Most gifts uh, I've observed usually require some sort of uh, reciprocation. One thing for another. A transaction, yes? Usually. Bianca, are you still carrying the bag? Yes. Make a stealth roll. All right, so that's my agility plus stealth. Agility plus stealth. All right. Uh, 16. Okay. <clears throat> Out of the corner of your eye, you see that some of the vultures uh, are kind of keen to your location, but it doesn't seem like they can pinpoint it. The vultures are paying attention to where we are. You don't say. Yeah, they, 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 they haven't quite got the pin on us, but they know what they're looking for. I wonder oh, why. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose we should keep moving. Well, 
Should we get on the boat now or wait until nightfall? Nightfall. <clears throat> okay, then. Let's see what happens. Nightfall right. it is. Is there like a tavern or bar or something on the docks that we can hang out at? Yes, there are a number of drinking houses, uh, a few tea houses as well. If you wish to go and drink your sorrows away, there are many places that you could find. Uh, a number of them have some of the crew that you have seen on board. Uh, in addition to many of the dock workers, the wharf patrons. So the the eats alert. What was the guy? The guy who's freaking out and thinks that this this dude's going to take over his planet. What was his name? Uh, Beetle. 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 So he's claiming that this guy in two days is going to go take over his world because of reasons. Is that what we understand? Uh, based on what he said, yes. Okay. Uh, Nobody's heard of this dude. Nobody's heard of his race. He's just here, followed these people, wants them for reasons. And then it's going to go just pick up and go and take over a planet in two days with I'm on a boat. That that <laughs> is that what we have? Is that the evidence that we Zizor. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, is that the evidence? Is that the track that we're on right now? So you had learned uh, because uh, we switched characters. So initially, when you had met Zetel. And Omesh would know this. She had spoke how uh, they had traveled from their homeworld um, and made their way here to Laheen. Mm -hmm. No one on their planet is enlightened, which means they know nothing of the void. Okay. So somehow they went through a void rupture and survived the void with no boat and made it here. Okay. Which in itself is amazing. Okay. Or just blind luck. All right, let's go with blind luck. They made it here. And and as far as we know that that that's probably true, not true. Best explanation uh, sort of deal. Yeah. Okay. So then you know, they tried to get help and uh, things didn't go the way they wanted and they were set upon by, you know, masked heathens, the night. Right. Uh, then she came seeking help in the nearest uh, human enclave, which is where all of you were at initially. Uh, she asked for your help in finding her friends and in going home. And she said that her planet is lush with ores, gems, and uh, pretty much shiny things. Okay. I mean, it seems stupid, but go in and get the dude to monologue and then leave? <laughs> just to, just to f try to figure out what the fuck we're going to do? I am going to this planet to get Jim. Like I, I, I just need a motive. <laughs> I need an understanding because right now all we know is I'm on a boat. That's it. That's that's what we got. And an assassin. That's what you got. <laughs> like assassins that's all he needs. on a boat. Which which is Sexy fine. Assassin on boat. Right. Which I mean, you know, if you show up with a boat that travels through space and time to a planet of a bunch of you know not enlightened people that got a bunch of rich stuff on their planet. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. But <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Like you just go well... and stabby stabby to the guy who can just be like, you like me now. 
I mean, this guy obviously wants everyone to kiss his ass, so maybe we show up on his boat pretending to want to kiss his ass, and then we take over the fucking ship. <laughs> then we have a void ship that we can use to uh, travel through the void, get Istil and, and her Zedel back to their planet. If he already took their companions, well, we got them too now, and we have a ship to get out of there with. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. That That's bold as fuck. Let's do that. Okay. Let's go on there, ask these a are couple all, questions, uh... and then... <laughs> And then uh, just mutiny. Sounds great. I'm for. I like this plan. I'm proud to be a part yeah. of it. <laughs> I am. I Thanks. like this plan as well. Yeah. At I least it will be fun. <laughs> Theoretically, I could try and just sink the ship. Where is the fun in that? You could do that. You'd also be murdering right. all the other people on board, including everyone. potential like captors that we want to try to rescue. But yeah, you could do that too. That's always an option. <laughs> so before we call it a night, as we are coming up on our on our time here, I wish for all of you to either make because you're you're in these bars and you know drinks are flowing, just like just like any other RPG where you have a tavern. There are loose lips. So whether you want to merely inquire, you wish to intimidate, uh, mm -hmm. socialize, yeah, socialize, perhaps streetwise, to try and find out some information about some maybe some more information on this prince. Ooh, ooh. I'll find some of the deckhands that have been working on the void ship and use my intimidate skill to get information out of them. There you go. Uh, what, what are we adding to that skill? What skill are you using? Uh, I'm using inquiry. Inquiry. So this will be uh, either perception or intellect. Or persuasion, I'm sorry. Persuasion uh, or intellect? Yes. What about for socialize? Socialize, uh, again, persuasion or presence. Okay. Uh, they're both the same. Uh, I have a nine total. Uh, Eleven for me. Fourteen. Eight. I can't do math. <clears throat> oh, wait. No, that, okay, that would be... Okay. So, Sniff's plan is to continue to go around and talk about what he's shipping back and forth just to see if he can get some more, like, what's going on that ship? What did they hear? Like, just constantly boasting about what he's delivering to that ship just to okay. see... And then see if he can't get something out of the others. And um, I rolled a 34. A 34? Whoa. Oh, I didn't even add my bonuses yet. That was um, <laughs> 36. Sub subterfuge is based on what? Subterfuge is... Uh, Persuasion? Persuasion or intellect. Okay. So the, um, thir 30... Four, thirty-five, thirty-six. A lot. Yes. <laughs> so for <laughs> all right, we'll cut we'll cut this up into into chunks. <clears throat> so who rolled less than ten? All right. So Regden, you are able to find out that uh, again you've heard that. Uh, you're pretty much getting this from most of the crew that are around and you know that they are in route like as soon as they ship off they are going to be in route to the Kaalum Federation world and that it has something to do with the humans held captive below uh, again they said that they're going to leave in like a couple days as soon as all the supplies have been brought on board really pretty much nothing more than what you've already heard However, 
anyone who rolled why does it Uh, a 20, between 20 and 10. Uh, I got an 11. Okay. So you meet up with actually a couple of the drunk soldiers that were on the deck. And you are able to learn that some of the soldiers, but not all of them, are part of the troop that were assigned to the prince by this unknown warlord. Even they don't even know his name. Uh, they're all of different worlds. They don't come, you know, some of them are human, some of them are other uh, sentient beings. But all of them, uh, at one point or another, their world struggled against this warlord for decades. And their worlds were just decimated. And they're pretty much now in servitude. So the prince himself was actually lived on a world similar to theirs. However, he saw the wisdom in aligning himself and his principality with the warlord. So the warlord may or may not be of the same species. They do not know. However, the soldiers themselves are members of the Warlord's army. They do not work for hmm. the Prince. Like, they are not under the Prince. Hmm. All right. And for years, they've been across the cosmos on different worlds, on assignments for the Warlord. Uh, and they're supposed to be preparing now to leave in a couple days to go and claim another world. Sniffs. You got the you got the you got the booyah. <laughs> you actually end up running into an envoy. Who is really excited about all the stuff that you're loading on. Mm -hmm. And this man is smashed. Excellent. And he is just bleeding information to you. Nice. He's like, he's like, I don't really, I don't have no allegiances to the prince. <clears throat> and, and but what, I'll tell you whatever you want. And he just goes on and on. About how he's been in, how he's been engaged to manage any bureaucratic hurdles between uh, uh, the warlord and the prince. He's also in charge of encounter uh, of any encounters on Kor Tuan, which is where they are headed. So you actually have the name of the planet that they're going to. Cool. Um, he's in charge of procuring all local assistance and resources for all of their travels and he's willing to tell you any information that you want like how much it costs who we talk to sometimes it's a little bit too much information like he's like yeah the guy the guy's name is fred whose uncle owns a boat that i once borrowed and you know it cost me this much but eventually it, sniffs is gonna get tired of just listening and just call somebody over and have them just write all this down <laughs> Um, however, he is not privy to the final destination. Oh, so it's not unlike, unlike the soldiers were. Huh. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. So uh, the prince has a warlord who has an army that they use to just take over planets. Yeah. Okay. So in addition to all of that, he pretty much gives you the layout. Like, as he's talking about like, oh yeah, you're bringing this stuff on the, on the, on the ship. And he gives you a, he doesn't draw it out, but he gives you a detailed, pretty much schematic of the ship. Okay. He's like, cool. oh yeah, all the good stuff we put in the, you know, the lower deck and then everybody else sleeps on the main deck. And oh yeah, there's like, yeah, there's like 27 crew members and yeah, they're all like, they're all dumb, dumb. They're just dumb. They're dumb. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then he points over to the, uh. To the soldiers that Bianca had gotten information out of, and they're like, "Yeah, 
there's like 15 of those guys and they just they walk all over the upper decks and they're just, they're you know they're on the lookout it's like but the ones you really got to look out for are the daughters of wailu those are some bad some bad bitches i mean mad is in cool but mad is in they're always mad <laughs> okay uh, and he tells you that their quarters are directly next to the prince's quarters on the prince's deck. So like bodyguards ish type yeah, thing. Okay. They're like yeah, they're like his super bodyguards. And he is his the prince's deck is the top deck. The one that you had seen him come out on. Okay. Uh he talks about uh there's like seven other like staff servant members including himself, the consort. Um, <clears throat> there, is a, there is a mystic, a robed mystic. He doesn't really know much about him, although uh, he has heard that he has the ability to extract information from the mine. Hmm. There is a word void navigator on board. And you know that an ord is the uh, the frog type person. Mm -hmm. And then there is one commander, Patali, who is uh, he's like the the leader of their contingent of troops. Okay. And kind of gives you a, a not really detailed description of everybody, but yeah, he's he's laying it all out. Got it. And I think that will be a good place to stop. Excellent. A huge, huge with it in a, in a huge information dump. I feel like we need to dunk this guy in, or drop this guy in a barrel to the bottom of the, uh, the ocean just to make sure he doesn't rat us out. Maybe think about that one. It can be arranged. Yeah. We got a barrel, just fling him up into the air far enough. Yeah. Fair enough. If it hits the so water, it'll shatter. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. But I do believe all of that information learned, this is where we will call it for the evening. And while I get these sweet beats going, I'm going to tell you all about what we have going on. Like next Tuesday, where we continue our journey in hopes of solving these strange mysteries and uh, maybe stop a guy from, you know, completely taking over a planet. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, but if you guys are looking for more terrifying tales, make sure that you guys check out Cult Infinity Lost that is on Sundays. which should be starting back up now that we're all back on schedule. Uh, Delta Green is continuing on Mondays, Mythos World, late Monday nights. Make sure you check out our own Sean's Octung Cthulhu on Wednesdays. Uh, of course, the Vorpal Chronicle of Darkness continuing with Mage on Thursdays and Masks of Nyarlathotep on Fridays. There's going to be a Pathfinder the Undying on... What day is that? <clears throat> Saturday? No. I got my days all mixed up. I don't even that's know what day that's on. That's Friday. Yeah, I'm, my schedule is all messed up in my head. <laughs> but nevertheless, Pathfinder, a scary story, <laughs> will be going on. Make sure you guys check the schedule for that one. And SCP, the RPG, is going to be starting up very soon. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be late Saturday night. However, there are awesome adventures that you can peruse, such as Scarred Lands, Draco Genesis, continuing on Fridays. Uh... A new D&D story, Usurpers of Ruination, that is on Saturdays. And you can also catch Fiasco, another awesome story, on Sundays. But yes, please check out our website, warbletales.com, to see our calendar, social media links, and recaps to all of our partners and affiliates. Check them out, purchase awesome stuff, and support us all in the same process, because that's cool. But now, let our Void Travelers tell everyone who you are. And uh, let them know all the cool things you do outside of Stroke. 
Yeah, hello. I've been Omesh. I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. You can find me on Thursday for our Mage of the Awakening Chronicle, on Friday for Call of Cthulhu, and on Sunday for something. I'm not sure what's going on on Sunday, but it'll be fun. Yeah, coming back, I can't. I don't have no idea what the schedule is. <laughs> Pretty sure it's fiasco on Sunday still. Hocus focus, but yeah. That sounds right. Oh, and I'm Eric. Of course, uh, you can find me online at Maron Recluse, and uh, I shall be returning back here on Monday for Delta Green. Hi, my name is Ray Alexa. You can uh, find me again. Uh, this time, sorry, I'm playing the Usurpers of Ruination, where I play a human bard. Uh, and then you can find me here again next Tuesday uh, playing Bianca. Hey there, I'm at Space Lord PJs. You can find me tomorrow night running Acton Cthulhu. It's going to be awesome. A bunch of Nazis. And then um, I think, well, no. I'll be here next Tuesday. And then me and Keel have to figure out who plays next Monday. Since we both missed yesterday. Gasp. Uh oh. And I am Dave. I played Reshden. Uh You can catch me on Friday night in Call of Cthulhu. Uh, back here on Tuesday for more Black Void. And then on October 23rd, you can catch me running my first ever stream game of Cyberpunk Red. Displaced and Disorderly on Carrying Comfort Studios. Nice. So for everyone who participated today, remember to add three experience points to your character. What? Uh, we will be able to use these very soon. Awesome. If, if you guys do get on a boat I'm and on it a leaves, boat. we're going to have a lot of quote unquote downtime. <laughs> You'll be able to spend those and level up. Nice. But <clears throat> as Tyler always says, it's now for the writer. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, he says it just like that. I'm tired. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. It's, it's been a week. <laughs> and it's not even halfway done. But now for the ride or die fans. It's vote time. So, uh, as I've said before, it is vote time. So vote for your favorite player of the evening, guys. My vote goes to Reshden for in, in the beginning of this session. Needing to slow down and be like, okay, but are we getting paid? <laughs> right. It's his, tr it's his, it's one of his <clears throat> negative uh, personality traits. No, that's, uh, right, right? I mean, that's a good question. I don't think any of us were thinking payment. So, uh, hard Bianca hitting questions. Was. Bianca was, she just didn't say it. <clears throat> I'm going to give mine to Sean because that whole interaction with the 40 million honeycomb Cornish, Cornish hens things had me cracking up. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to give mine to uh, Sean for the same reason. Nice. I'm going to give mine to Key for that lovely like self-catapult maneuver, which was awesome. <laughs> I was really hoping it was going to fail. <laughs> you know, either way, it was. Too. Either way, it would work. It worked beautifully. No matter how it panned out, it would have been glorious. I really wanted the spell, the spell to fail like halfway through, and him just hit the ground. Oh, is that everybody? It is everybody? It's everyone. I'll, uh, I'll vote for Key for knocking two buzzards out from you know yards away. Oh, I'm sorry. I did jump in line. I'm sorry. No, it's, oh, I, I was, I was, it took a while for me to figure out who, but yeah, key doing a uh, mind bullets against buzzards. All right. So yes, remember guys that your votes are worth rerolls. Oh, right. Sweet. And anyone in the chat that may be watching, if you also wish to vote for your favorite player that will allow them to regain sanity which a lot of it is going to be lost very soon. Oh, no. So it will be it will be very useful. 
But with all of that out of the way, we must depart our side of the cosmos right now and return to Earth because we have real stuff to do. But when you all out there look at the stars, please remember us and the sacrifices that we make for all sentient beings around the cosmos. But don't stare too long, else the void will take you. Good night! Good night! Good night!